It's a dirty! Okay, boys. Got a dirty on the ski plate. I told you about that, Leon. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Dotty! On the ski baits, on the way out to the ship. Come here! Um, today we're going to talk about um, targeting. No, that's wrong. Take five. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another Tip Tipsy Tuesday tip. Um, today we're going to be making a uh, Dorado Skip Bay Trace, which works phenomenally in KZN, um, especially for targeting Dorado as well. That's what it's for. You can basically get anything on it Wahoo, your, your, your odd bullfish, um, even a tuna if you want. Um, so basically, what you're going to need is a medium sized bait spring, two number five power swivels, a little snook skirt, a pink and pearl is good, pink is always good for, for the rider, a squid, eight tall kennel round chai hook, about 30 centimeters of number six wire, and about a 10 centimeter piece of number six wire. And the round nose ply is just to make just to make that haywire so much more better. And um, yeah, so basically when you're targeting them with the skip bait trace, and, I'll, and I will show that just now. I'll show the pinning of the bait. Um, first of all, when I launch, first thing that I first thing that I, that I take out of my ski is my skip bait rig. I'll turn my bait on. I'll put him out about four to five meters behind me while I'm busy getting ready. And I'll collect my bait on the back line or wherever it is. Yeah, and then from there I will. Head out to my mark, like to the barge or deeper off the barge, and while moving, I will let my skip baits out now, about say seven to eight meters behind me, while I'm paddling as 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 hard and fast as hard and fast as I possibly can. And obviously once, and then obviously once I start fishing my once I start fishing my live baits, I'll have my two live baits out in the on the river. I'll have my two live baits out in the back, and I'll have my skip bait rig standing straight up in straight up behind me but very very close to the ski probably about two meters behind me and that actually brings those Dorado up to check out what's happening there and and the thing is if they don't commit on on the ski bait they will fall back and get your live is out in the back but with all that said let's get into making the trace okay so now, so now it's time to make your haywire i'm actually going to try to do this nice and slowly so you can get to see it as well come in with your round nose pliers and you put it like that give it a nice squeeze and you just make your loop just so that you have a nice, neat little loop on there. Let's just get this out the way for now. So this is basically starting off from the top of the rig. So you get your power swivel in there. Take your round nose pliers. Just hold that loop that you made. So then you just start off with your 45s. And you just make a nice full loop. Bring your hand completely out. And you go back in again. And make sure that both the wires are spread folding over each other not just one because your knots will slip so you do this about three three to four times i generally just go four for luck and then from there you take your tag end you straighten it out and now you're going to do your 90s to finish it off over here i'll also go about four to five so i'm gonna go one two three four and five and then there's plenty of ways of breaking this off. You can twist it like that and crack it off. I'm not too familiar with that. Uh, my method is rock it back and forth. One, two, three, four, five. Generally breaks off on six. Just because it's on foot seed around. And eight it broke off. So now what that does, I mean that's your haywire there. And that leaves you with a nice smooth finish. Because if you have to cut that off with, with the pliers, you're going to end up poking yourself. So then from there, you come with your pink squid, you poke it through, get in there, and then following behind the pink squid, 
You're going to come in with your snook duster. And then behind your snook duster, come in with your bait spring. And then once again, your trusty old round nose pliers, make another loop. Like that, and then you put in your second swivel. And then one, then once again, your haywire twist. Start with your with your forty fives. One, two, three, four. I'm going into my nineties. One, two, three. Four and one for luck and then once again break that off do not cut it off with the pliers end up with a sharp piece that's off okay now you come with your short little piece of wire once again another hay wire Now once again another hay wire over here, which I'll just do quickly. Snap it off once done. And then now you're ready for your hook and then your knot is about done. So you're going to have a nice long piece here. Do not cut this short because you're going to need this piece here to, to actually stick into your bait. So just where this notch here was done, you just come behind it a bit. I generally just leave about a, a finger space between that. Make my loop again. Now attach my knot. I mean my, attach my hook to that. Okay, so now hook's on. And then it's my final haywire. Just one, two, three, and then straighten it up. One, two, three, four, and five for luck. Okay, now this is where the knot, this is where the trace becomes actually important. This little piece that you have sticking out needs to be the same side as your hook, so it needs to be standing straight up like that. So if it is on the side like that, just add an extra half a twist to it until you get it pinned straight like that. Obviously that is way too long. You're probably looking for the piece about the thickness of your finger, or just a little bit more for safety. And always cut it in an angle, so that it just pierces through the bait's mouth a lot easier. And then there you have it there, that's the bottom of your rig there. You have your spade spring, which hooks onto the top of your bait. You have your snook duster, and last but not least, the stuff that thought it lacks, is your pink squid. Okay, and then guys, what I clean forgot to tell you before pinning on the bait, you want to get this pink, this snook skirt into this squid. So you're just going to open it up, and then get that in there. Take a little pliers or something and just push on the head of the snook lure of the snook skirt just to push it into the head of the squid so that it stays like that so it's like that okay so let's get into pinning this this bait i would generally use a red eye or a chap mac a chap mac is your number one go-to bait but unfortunately this is all i have at the moment so basically your hook is gonna sit you basically want to put your hook through to come in, out the belly of here tuck under the gills and this wire will go through the head there and then the bait spring will hold it together so first things first let's just get measuring before we just pop the hook through so that means my hook got to come in somewhere over here just literally at the end of the mouth so it's dead on dead on center in between the gills is where i will insert my hook like that run it down as far as i can and when, it, and when the hook comes out the belly it must come out dead center as well you don't want your bait spinning. Just feel for it. And there we go. Out through the center, that hook ducks nicely under the gill plates over there. Probably have to pull it out just now to get the wire through. And then your wire 
goes in on the tip of the bait's mouth. Also try to get that as straight as possible. Now you can duck your hook once again. There's no need for cotton and all that in the stress. From there you take your bait spring and you literally just wrap it up until the bait spring sits nice and tight on that mackerel's head. And this is why we go with a medium and not a large. And then that comes down like that. And there you have it. Skip bait trace. If I'm here, I can start off with you and come down. You can just move the hand movements just around like. I'm ready when you are. Okay, we good. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another one. <laughs> There's gonna be a few of those. Ah. It's just, it's playing in my mind for too long. I'm talking it over in my head. How's it, guys? Stop. I don't have a side cut. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> if I must say so myself, that looks fucking genuine. Yo, ah. Okay, can we go for that? Shut up. Yesterday, um, yesterday, how many flops we eat? Two, three. Three flops. Take four. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening guys? Welcome back to another Tip Tipsy Tuesday Tip. Ah, yeah. Anyway, Courtney, don't drink that in the water. <laughs> Quite a bit of butter in there. This one, the screen is over you. Yeah. That's why it looks at you like, uh... <laughs> recording, right? It's now still recording. Come, yeah, now we come the to the... The screen went, uh... Oh. So, we're coming close enough for the hands. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, bro. 